Hello and welcome to ITV News London Online. Been away for a while, but we've got a very special guest tonight. She's a front woman of a great band. She's a radio presenter, also a bit of reality TV, and now an inspiration for aspiring chefs. But we'll come on to that a little bit later. It's Keris Matthews. Um, let's just have a little bit of a listen to what she's known best for. Had to finish with a bit of I'm a celebrity. You just said in the studio that you've actually never seen that before. No, I've never seen it. It looks before. absolutely petrified. I was petrified. And I thought that I'd land on the ground and have this adrenaline rush, which is what people say that bungee jump a lot. That's what they do it for, the adrenaline rush. But my body was just saying, don't ever do that again. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Another thing I've got to ask you about that little montage, and I'm sure you've had it a million times, Tom Jones. Yeah. I mean, that is the dream for many singers. That must have been incredible. It was. It, it continues to be incredible. He's a he's a huge music fan, so his record collection is incredible. Mm. But to be able to stand next to somebody with a voice like Tom, I mean, I'll never forget that. You know, he'll open his mouth, and it's it's, it's you can feel it before you hear the noise, yeah. the beautiful noise that he's able to make with his throat. He's a lovely, lovely chap. As yeah. Well. well, I want to talk to you a bit about sort of your career in music because we have a lot of musicians on here who always have interesting stories, and obviously you went into a specific genre. Um, what was it like growing up as a, a front woman in that band, trying to trying to make your way early on? Well, for for one, I never really defined myself as a front woman. I was just mm. a musician, to be honest. Um, it was exciting um, because in Wales, it, you know, nobody had been coming over the bridge, for, you know, since man or budgie. You know, <laughs> that was decades before us. Um, and so you had the Gorky Psychotic Monkey, the Super Fairy Animals. You had Manic Street Preachers. You had ourselves, and together we became this sort of an attraction in a way, a magnetic attraction, so that the industry people started coming over the bridge. And then we started breaking across the world and we all travelled. And in fact, in, in the book, I talk about a cocktail that, um, because it wasn't just the Welsh bands then, you were part of the 90s scene. So it was Happy Mondays, Stone mm. Roses and things like that. So um, in the book, I, I talk about the, um, sitting at the foot of Fuji Mountain in Japan and Ian Brown and me going, oh, oh Ian, you know, what's your favourite cocktail? <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it's, it's a great cocktail for winter shopping. Um, I'll tell you what it is, half a pint of empty pint, um, and then you put a shot of Tia Maria, a yeah. shot of vodka, and then you fill the rest with Guinness, and it's called Death by Chocolate. So, I'm like, a big fan of that sort of early 90s Are scene. you? Yeah, a bit like sort of the Britpop era, you know, Oasis, the Roses yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. It seems like a pretty crazy time to be involved in music. What was it like sort of off stage? Sort of, you know, you've mentioned about talking about cocktails with Ian Brown, for example. Yeah. Well, you know, we were all very young. We were in our 20s and it was very exciting. We'd be travelling, you know, the festivals, Bene Kassim, Ross Gilda, Lorelei, Fuji Rock. You know, we'd be going travelling the yeah. world. So it was, it was high, it was intense. So, you know, you, you work hard, you know, we certainly played hard in the 90s and, and that's it. But that's like 20 odd years ago now. I mean, just, just watching that Mulder and Scully um, video. Mm. I mean, she, 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 that person in the video looks more like my daughter, actually. So it's quite funny. It's, it is 20. Is it not 20 longer than that? I don't know. So it's, it's gone. Yeah. It's, it's passed. I don't, I don't even think about it anymore. And obviously, I've, I've been on the radio for 10 years now and, and I program those shows. I play music from all over the world that I've collected all my life um, from when I was a child and when I was touring. And, and that, that's why I've brought this book out because it's, I collected proverbs and quotes and historic, you know, historical stuff, curiosities and things that make you smile. Um, and I thought it'd be quite nice to put them out in a book. Yeah, well, let's have a bit of a chat about the book because this is a bit of a change of direction for you, isn't it? It's a cookbook. It's not because I've been cooking all my life. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like I explain it to people. You know, if you if you if you become sort of in the, in the public eye for something, then then obviously that's inevitably that's what you're known for. But yeah. it doesn't mean that you're not interested in reading or um, carpentry or <laughs> you know collecting railways or making railways like Rod Stewart. You're just yeah. not very well known for it. So. Yeah, I've, I've collected food history stuff. You know, there's quotes in this, beautiful quotes like um, this 
great traveller from Morocco, Ibn Battuta, that we should all know about. He was born in 1304. Travelling, it gives you a home in a thousand strange places, then leaves you a stranger in your own home. And there's just, and, oh, there's one, Sophia Loren, which is everything you see, I owe to pasta. You yeah. know, there's just beautiful quotes from all over the world. And it also makes you question your um, sense of identity as well, because a lot of things that we count as say very Welsh or very English, you don't have to roll the time back too long to see that actually we were yeah. erroneous in thinking that. And that's the beauty of being in a band touring in the 90s. You've been to all corners <laughs> of the earth, isn't it? There must be recipes from all over the place in there. There's 15 countries. So yeah. you start in the American South because I lived there. So a lot of soul foods uh, like fried red tomatoes or fried green tomatoes. You can do them either way. And grits and poached eggs and shrimp mm. and things like that. And it takes you all the way because there's, there's a map. So it takes you all the way to Japan through 13 other countries. Yeah, I'm just happy that there's a bit from Liverpool in there. There is, because the, the, the word... This won't, won't chime well with the ITV London, but if you, ca if you can't tell, <laughs> Wales and Liverpool here. <laughs> so no, I'm in interested in that bit. I was in Liverpool because I've been touring the book and I'm playing Cecil Sharp House at the end of September as well, 26. And it's poetry, music, curiosities, demonstrations, making that death by chocolate cocktail, um, sharing of sort of ideas. But yeah, the, the word scouser comes from lob scouse, mm. which is the North Whalian equivalent of the soup we in the South call cowl, and um, which actually comes from all of those countries that are on the Baltic shores. Mm. I didn't know it, that. It's a sailor's stew. So that, I mean, that's, that's the kind of food history, that uh, world history you get in the book. Mm. Things like the croissant is not French. Um, the schnitzel is not German. Chilies are not indigenous to India. Um, tomatoes neither to, you know, it makes you rethink things. Oh. St. Patrick was Welsh. Um, what else is in there? St. George never slayed a dragon, probably never set foot in England, and is actually a patron saint to tens of other countries. There'll be so many people who are, who are tuning in now going, oh my God, how do you know all this stuff? <laughs> but it's all inspired, isn't it, from an Indian neighbor growing up, is that right? Well, uh, for, for, this is a folk cookbook. Yeah. And so what I associate with food is love and, and, and exchange and meeting people and songs sung and poetry read and things learnt. Yeah. So, yes, you know, my mum only ate chicken and chips, couldn't cook, only Finder's pancakes. And we had a neighbour called Mudrika Purahit, and she was from Gujarat via Kenya and Uganda. And her kitchen, oh my word, the smells of the curry were just fantastic and my, my dad was like well, why can't we have a smell like that in our curry in our kitchen please uh, and Madrika and my mum were really good friends so they they spent um time you know with, yeah um, Miss Pura had taught my mum how to cook and and then my mum just went off sailing and mm. we've been cooking dals and rotis and sag paneers and everything for all our lives yeah we've spoken a bit about Wales spoken a little bit about Liverpool I suppose we better talk about London yeah London. Um, what, what's the London influences then because you now live in Ladbrook Grove is that yeah. right yeah well you imagine Ladbrook Grove especially carnival time you've got all the smokers yeah you've got the coconut and stuff like that but and the music oh my gosh the clash and then you've got reggae music and all the record shops that used to be there but London yeah I love being a small fish in a big pond I love being just one person that got on the bus and and didn't you know got off the bus and didn't get back on again as, as a quote from Dylan Thomas I mean my neighbours and my friends are from so many different countries across the world there's so many languages in the schools my children go to and, and you know every time we have a sort of a holiday day an international day there's food from Ecuador Peru Rwanda Tanzania Morocco Afghanistan Wales and you know it's it's just all there for us and even in the restaurants as well it's all there so mm. it's I, I love it I think that's part of you know, a beautiful world we live in is being able to, to, to be, you know, culturally exchanged and, and to, to love each other for our differences and what we have in common. Yeah. I just want to chat to you a little bit because you live in Labbrook Grove and you've spoken a bit about um, the Grenfell Tower fire before. Um, ba basically, you've spoken a lot in the past about how it personally affected you. Yeah. Um, why, why was it sort of living so close to the tower that you that you felt the need to speak out about that? I, I live right opposite it. Mm. Um, we were there that night. We heard everything that was going on. We were woken up by the sounds and it shouldn't have happened. Nobody's been held accountable for it. And it's failed on every level and we're still seeing fires. Fire regulations need to change, building control needs to change and people need to be, held, be able to be held accountable mm -hmm. when they're looking after buildings. You know, these are people's lives. There was no way I couldn't say anything about it. You wouldn't be able to stay silent if you'd have witnessed what 
went on that night. It still, it still affects all of us in the community. And until somebody pays for that, I think it'll all, I mean, it's hard to, to, to put, st you know, it will not end. We're still waiting for the inquiry, the first inquiry mm -hmm. with Morbic. It'll be interesting to see what they say because the evidence is there, you know, as we've just seen with the Worcester fire. Last well, thing we're week. doing stories this week about another fire in London, which fortunately no one was injured in. Yeah. But in terms of since Grenfell Tower, you know, it's been a, a long time. Fire regulations need to change and building control, and unfortunately, the government is too busy with this mess. I mm. um, just want to move it back then to your music and what, what you're what yeah. you're up to now. Yeah. Um, so. What, what, what is it? Because I know you've got a couple of gigs coming up. What have you been doing recently? Um, well, this this book, Where the Wild Cooks Go, is out now on Penguin with a playlist, I should mention, because that's the other thing with music. It's it's not just the, um, with food. It's not just the food, is it? It's the atmosphere and stuff. So the playlist is live now on Spotify. I've, I've put it all together. Um, so there's 15 different countries and there's at least an hour for each country of playlists mm. on Spotify for people to access while they're cooking if they fancy. Um, and I've got uh, a gig in Hove and a gig in Cecil Sharp House, as I mentioned earlier, at the end, the last week of September. Um, and Dublin as well, which I'm excited about. And then my Sunday show and my Radio 2 Blue show on Monday. And the festival this weekend, the Good Life Experience. So I'm off to um, Flincher, which is near Chester, near mm. you. Um, on the train tomorrow, it's a festival of food that I've, um, I sort of founded. Food, music, action, crafts, poetry and nature. Mm, exciting times. Well, Keris, it's been fantastic having you And I'm sure I'll have a look at the particularly the Liverpool sector. Yes, of please do. Yeah, but thanks very much. <laughs> thanks for, for having behind. me. No time. worries at all. Uh, but yeah, that's all we've got time for tonight. You can, if you've missed any of this, you can catch up on our YouTube channel. You can also have a look at all of our previous interviews on there as well. But for now, have a good evening. <laughs>